Well, looky here. You are listening to someone who is bold, authentic, diverse, unpredictable. Baby, I am unapologetically Ramon, and you have entered my zone, the QB zone, baby. Hello, somebody. and we are back down to the QB zone. It's been a minute, but I just wanted to come and do, I guess you could say a special episode today. Definitely to me, one that's important. This is June. This is the month in June, and this is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Of course, something that I think is not just very important to me, but society. And so the topic, or the title rather, is understanding emotional regulation in men why it matters emotional regulation is the process of managing one's feelings to adapt to various situations effectively this plays a crucial role in the mental health and well-being of individuals however for emotional men the journey towards mastering self emotional regulation often intersects with cultural expectations and stereotypes that condition them to suppress their emotions. This intersection not only impacts their personal growth, but also shapes their interactions and relationships. Understanding the dynamics of men and emotions and recognizing the importance of emotional intelligence self-regulation is fundamental to fostering healthier relationships and societies. This episode is going to briefly unfold by delving into the cultural expectations and stereotypes that influence men's approach to emotional regulation, highlighting the consequences of suppressing feelings. It proceeds to outline healthy ways for men to express emotions advocating for emotional regulation activities that promote emotional men's well-being. Further, this episode is going to offer strategies for embracing vulnerability, a critical step towards achieving emotional intelligence self-regulation. By the end, I want you to grasp a comprehensive understanding of men and feelings equipped with the knowledge to support themselves or the men in their lives in navigating the complex landscape of emotional regulation. There's a term called orthodox masculinity. This involves men asserting dominance over women and less powerful men. This traditional view socializes men to embody strength and dominance, reinforcing stereotypes that men must be stoic, independent, and powerful. Historically, men expressed emotions openly, like Greek heroes and knights of the round table. But modern representation has also played a role, often reinforcing gender stereotypes by underrepresenting women and misrepresenting masculinity, influencing societal views and individual self-perception. These cultural norms and media portrayers significantly impact men's mental health, discouraging them from expressing vulnerabilities and seeking help. Suppressing emotions often leads to severe mental health issues in men, including depression, anxiety, and an increased risk of suicide. The pressure to conform to traditional masculine norms, such as emotional stoicism, exasperates these issues, leading to internal tension and hopelessness. This emotional suppression can also manifest as aggression, 
further complicating personal and professional relationships. While internal relationships, the inability to express emotions and seek support results in isolation and less support from loved ones. These dynamics hinder the development of healthy relationships, intensifying feelings of loneliness and reducing opportunities for emotional intimacy. Long term, the societal effects of men's emotional suppression include perpetuating cycles of toxic masculinity and increasing instances of interpersonal violence. Emotion regulation difficulties, especially under stress, lead to behaviors that align with harmful masculine norms, such as aggression, rather than allowing vulnerable emotions like sadness or anxiety. I'm going to talk about some healthy ways for us men to express our emotions. So engaging in physical activities like weightlifting, running, swimming, or martial arts can significantly enhance emotional regulation by releasing endorphins that improve your mood. Therapeutic hobbies such as yoga, meditation, gardening, cooking, and playing musical instruments provide men with avenues to channel emotions constructively, promoting mindfulness and stress reduction. Additionally, writing or photography can serve as powerful tools for self-expression and emotional processing. Seeking, for help, seeking professional help through therapy and counseling is crucial. It offers a safe space for men to articulate their feelings and struggles, aiding in better emotional management and fostering healthier relationships. Support networks also play a vital role. Engaging with peer support groups or therapy can reconstruct traditional masculine norms providing men with tailored mental health support and, even more importantly, a sense of purpose. These practices not only help men develop awareness and strategies to regulate emotions, but also encourage them to embrace vulnerability as a strength, leading to improved mental health and emotional well-being. Embracing vulnerability involves acknowledging fears and insecurities, which opens the door to deeper connections and personal growth. Practical steps include practicing self-compassion, setting boundaries, and being honest about your feelings. This enhances the opportunity for learning and evolving. Mindfulness and self-awareness is important too because developing emotional awareness through mindfulness helps cultivate vulnerability and empathy. Engaging in self-reflection exercises like journaling, which I do a lot of, or meditation provides insights into one's emotional landscape, fostering a deeper understanding of oneself and enhancing relationships. There is very much a level of importance when it comes to open communication because open and honest communication is crucial in fostering intimacy and trust in relationships sharing thoughts fears and vulnerabilities allows for authentic interactions where both partners can understand and support each other's emotional needs leading to a flourishing intimacy Throughout what we've just briefly touched on in regards to emotional regulation in men, we've confronted some of the damaging cultural norms and stereotypes that often leave men to suppress their emotions, ultimately impairing their mental health and relationships. The journey towards emotional intelligence and vulnerability is undeniably challenging amid societal pressures to conform to traditional masculine ideals. Yet, embracing this journey is paramount for fostering emotional well-being and nurturing healthier relationships by advocating for a healthy emotional expression and 
providing strategies like engaging in physical activities, therapy, and openness in communication. We briefly underscore the importance of confronting and redefining masculinity in this episode for the betterment of both individuals and society as a whole. The implication of these discussions are far-reaching, suggesting a paradigm shift in how society perceives men's emotional regulation and the collective effort needing to support this change. Embracing vulnerability as a strength and recognizing the value of expressing emotions openly paves the way for deeper, more meaningful connections and personal growth. By encouraging further exploration of this topic and suggestions with actionable steps toward emotional well-being, we not only challenge outdated stereotypes, but also contribute to a cultural that views and values that nurtures emotional health in men. Moving forward, I think we should continue this conversation expanding more on our understanding and acceptance of emotional diversity among men for a more empathetic and emotionally intelligent society. And it could start small with your household, with your friend group, some of your relatives, depending on your profession, maybe even some of your coworkers. When I was looking into this topic, I did come across probably four main questions because there's a lot of questions um, like frequently asked questions when it comes to this topic and so I just wanted to share four of them the first one is what makes emotional regulation crucial emotional regulation is vital because it allows individuals to manage their reactions and feelings providing them with the opportunity to consider others emotions handle disappointments, and respond sensibly to unforeseen changes. Children who exhibit behaviors like throwing objects or having tantrums often lack emotional control. The next question is, what are some effective strategies for men to regulate their emotions? And it's, it's seven steps. The steps that men can use to regulate their emotions are step one, Withdraw from triggering situations. Step two, avoid methods that numb emotions. Step three, contact a supportive friend. Step four, spend some time alone in a quiet environment. Step five, find a way to release pent up anger. Step six, write down your thoughts and feelings. Step seven, or allow yourself to experience and express emotions freely. The third question is, why is emotional intelligence significant for men? Emotional intelligence is crucial for men because it correlates with greater success in their careers, stronger interpersonal relationships, and higher overall well-being. Men are often encouraged to be stoic and suppress emotions, make emotional intelligence particularly essential as it helps them navigate social and professional landscapes more effectively. And the last question is, why should men openly express their emotions? It is essential for men to express their emotions for the sake of their relationships and personal health. Being emotionally expressive can help men resolve conflicts in their relationships and improve their overall mental and emotional well-being. Y'all know I'm always very appreciative for you all supporting me and tuning in. Like, not enough words to express how appreciative I am to you all. And if this helped just one person... I'm happy. Works for me. Nothing's done in vain. I definitely know I learned a lot um, just about myself, past, present, and future. So y'all know how I do. I never let y'all go without leaving with a quote. And so the quote for today that I have for you is this. Your purpose is not the thing you do. It is the thing that happens in others when you do what you do.